reminded me of a, um, a time where I was uh, sharing a testimony with, uh, with my grandmother who wasn't in the Lord and something uh, the Lord had done for me and she said look here comes the pussycat and uh, if, if that wasn't the biggest fob off you've ever had I thought okay she's not listening um, you get that sometimes um, but praise the Lord it doesn't take away from the, the great things we've got to tell people um, just wanted to uh, start off here today um, just uh, talking about the story of, uh, of uh, Jesus Christ and him, him coming to earth. Um, of course, um, at this time of year, uh, kids will be hearing it in, uh, in schools, in, in some schools. Um, you, might, you might hear the story of Jesus' birth. You might be um, trying on some clothes in a shopping centre and you'll hear it coming across with the Christmas carols or, uh, or in the supermarket, um, that sort of thing. Actually, it's, yeah, the, yes, uh, I was working this week at somebody's place and, um, and uh, yeah, she was, uh, we were having a bit of a chat and then she sort of said, oh yeah, I'm making my, um, I'm making my, my puddings and, um, you know, she's got all the, the Christmas carols playing and, and I suppose just trying to compare, she was maybe trying to compare notes about God and, uh, you know, she was sort of doing all, all her things and uh, make, building this deck and there's this tree in a pot and I can't move the, the pot um, in case it dies or something so I've got to build it around the... The, uh, around the tree and she said oh yeah the tree's very spiritual and um, and, and she's sort of trying to uh, trying to compare notes um, this is this is the same lady that um, I think last year I went around there and worked and um, she invited me in and then she sprayed me down with Glen 20 that was uh, during COVID <laughs> so I, um, I'm never quite too sure what to expect when I when I go there but um, um, I suppose that was her you know, this time of year, just talking about her puddings and a spiritual tree and having the Christmas carols playing and that was her bit sort of thing. So we get, um, we get those sort of things fed to us at this time of year. You know, there's little bits about Jesus and that sort of thing. So I thought, let's read the story or part of it. Luke chapter 2. We'll start in verse 4. So, um... We read that it was time for a census, and um, and so people were returning to their their homeland, land, their hometowns, and so that's what we read here in verse four. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger and when they had seen it they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds 
But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things uh, that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And so we get this this story, and, and like I say, it's it's around us, you know, this time of the year, um, where we get little little parts of this story in song, and um, and we get a whole lot of things that uh, that uh, get get thrown us thrown at us at Christmas time, and um, and sometimes you sort of have trouble connecting the dots. Where where does Jesus uh, fit into all of this? And uh, of course, we read this story and. Um, many of you will be aware um, it's it's very unlikely that Jesus was born December the 25th there's no record of that and and in fact you know it talks about the um, shepherds being in the field so in the northern hemisphere that's not very likely um, and uh, but but somehow we get all of these things put together and, and fed to us so the word of God is always always the best uh, place to go to get the to get the story. I want to skip down to verse 25, and there's just a really a really cool part of the story here with a man named Simeon. It says, "And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel or the or the the rescue of Israel." and the, for the for the Messiah to come, and the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, uh, Lord, uh, now let us uh, thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Another version says, he is the light to reveal God to the nations. And this is the story of Jesus Christ. You know, whatever, whatever little bits we, we get at the moment in our world, the story of Jesus Christ, a light to reveal God to the nations. And this man, Simeon here, who'd been promised that you'll see him before you die. And there he is. I've seen him. My, my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord, that the, the Messiah has come. And um, how many people say that in our world today? You know, before I, want to die, before I die, I want to see the salvation of, of our Lord. Um, you know, I want to. I want to see the Savior, the one who came to to save me from death. How, how many people say that? You know, I want to see Jesus Christ. And and yet we've got this time of year, you know, around the twenty fifth of December, where many around the globe would try to make it look like he means something. You know, whatever it is with nativity scenes or, or Christmas carols and. You know, here in, uh, in the Geelong Revival Fellowship, um, you won't see us as a church getting actively involved in those things. The, uh, the Christmas tree out there isn't ours. Um, didn't have Ryan coming in here and, you know, sneaking it in on setup or anything like that. Um, but, you know, I thought I'd just um, talk about it a little bit today. Some people will have heard us preach on this topic before, but many won't have. And... I don't think it, it hurts as, as a reminder that it, it stands us in, in good stead to talk about some of these things. Um, when we were coming together nearly 12 years ago as a church here, and you know you got people from different backgrounds and, and re, with regard to, um, to Christmas, um, some could take it or leave it. Um, you got some hated mention of uh, the, the word even. And, and praise the Lord, you know, the, a belief that we find to, we, we manage to find a, a scriptural path forward. And, and may we continue in that, you know, in, in all things, that's what our, what our aim is. And just to be united in the Holy Ghost and, and, uh, and not creating a stumbling block um, for one another or, 
or getting caught up in, in fruitless conversations or, or reasonings. Because um, we all come from different backgrounds and upbringings and, you know, um, cultures. I mean, I think, um, yeah, mo most of us have sort of lived in Australia for, for a fair, fair amount of time, but different, um, different ways and cultures in e each family. For example, I, I grew up as a, as a young fella um, with one side of my family in the Lord and the other side not. Um, and uh, my mum's side German and my dad's side Dutch. So all my three sides are out of the World Cup now. To the Germans, the Dutch and the Aussies. Um, so um, anyway, my mum's my side, the, the German side, they um, always uh, professed to be atheists. And that's uh, part of my mum's testimony about coming to the Lord, that she was, she was atheist. And, um, uh, you know, we would, we would go to their house, um, you know, around this time every year to, to sort of be greeted with uh, Merry Christmas and um, even Nativity Scene and um, Star of Bethlehem. And then you got reindeer and you got wreaths and, you know, mistletoe and all of that. And you're sort of struggling to connect the dots here. Um, even as a young fella, I found that a bit bizarre, you know, um, how, to, how do all those things come together in a, in a house of atheists? And, um, but um, they gave good presents, so I got over that, um, and, uh, and good food. Um, but the Merry Christmas bit, I, uh, I could never bring myself to, to say that, you know, um, what, what does that mean? You know, like um, Christ, once again, house of, house of atheists. Christ, Mass, you know, we'd, we'd get that from the, uh, the Catholics. And here in a, in a house that all my, my life, um, I heard uh, yeah, my mum's side of the family, they're being witness to and rejecting the gospel and, um, and, and them and, and strongly rejecting the gospel. Um, um, that story I just told about the pussycat, that was later on when sort of everything it all sort of calms down, but they strongly rejected the gospel for a lot of years. And, um, and uh, you know, to de deny the power of Christ in us and to deny he even exists. And then we have the warm and fuzzies at Christmas time, you know, Merry Christmas sort of thing. And uh, the sad part, you know, is that my, my opa uh, died this year, the, the, the last of my grandparents but unlike Simeon that we read in that story he couldn't say my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord and you know Jesus Christ didn't mean didn't mean anything to him and even though at December you know each year the baby Jesus was there in his lounge room um, and you know for all the for all the nice family times um, you know my, my opa never came to the Lord and and, you know, I suppose that's really the thing that that's the problem and that it, is that we think about is not, maybe not Christmas so much, but, um, you know, or, or the tree or, um, or you know, the, the facts that, you know, as you, you look into it and, you know, comes from pagan origins and those sorts of things. Um, I, I, I mean... It, you, you sort of look back, you know, the fourth century or whatever it is there, and where where pagan um, Rome coming together with the Christians and, and and compromise to have more of a chance to bring people, um, uh, you know, into the the Christian realm, and and this this feast of Saturnalia, and that's where you connect the dots because you've got the the celebration of the winter solstice and the evergreen tree and so on and and. You know, and the the wreaths and the the candles and so on, and and all of those things, and and so it was this compromise, and that's where you know you connect those strange dots. Where how did Jesus get into all of this? You know, and 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 so much so that you get in 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 the house of my family there that they don't even believe in God, and they can sort of put that all together and. It becomes this big, big celebration of compromise, and but like I say, is that is that the is, is Christmas the problem, or is the problem just that people don't know Jesus Christ? And you know, so in our dealings with the unsaved, 
do we come on hot and strong? Um, maybe, do you want to turn to uh, Judges chapter 6? I'll give you an example of hot and strong in the Old Testament. But of course, the New Testament is different to the Old. And that's where I want to get to um, in the things that Jesus teaches us in the New Testament. Um talking about yeah people coming on hot and strong there's there's a story about Gideon and um, it talks about here in Judges 6 that the Israelites were were captive to the Midianites for for seven years Um, and uh, even so that anything the Israelites tried to grow or tried to build um, the the Midianites destroyed it and so they eventually they cried out to the Lord and um, and God said to them "I, I brought you out of Egypt um, and uh, I'm the Lord your God don't worship any other God but you have not obeyed my voice and um, and so then uh, then this man Gideon comes into the story and he's threshing wheat in, in hiding trying to keep the trying to keep the wheat so that the Midianites don't take it or destroy it and and an angel appeared to Gideon and says the Lord is with thee and um, and Gideon, as was his way, a couple of times he, he asked the Lord for a sign and uh, the Lord performed it. So we'll just pick it up in verse 22. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the uh, Abiezrites. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it. And build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in the ordered place and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou shalt cut down. And then Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he could not do it by day that he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down and the grove was cut down that was by it. And the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And so here we read of the way that uh, we we get familiar with in the Old Testament. And there's a a God there that's being worshipped and to cut it down. You know, and um, um, I suppose... Like I say, I want to bring the New Testament into that because we don't live in that time anymore. And um, if if I'm sort of comparing it here to um, to different stands we make in our walk in the Lord, um, there's some things, you know, maybe like this one. There's there's no point burning burning your relatives. You know, you can go you can go around hacking down Christmas trees and whatever pagan um, you know things that remain in our world. Um, but but there's no no point in in burning um, burning your relatives. Like we want to win their hearts to see Jesus Christ. Do you want to turn to Second Corinthians chapter ten? So in verse 1 here, we read of the New Testament way. It says, Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So that's what we've just read about, right? Is in the Old Testament, a war after the flesh that in, in, involved um, the flesh. But 
though we're in these bodies, we don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That verse 5 in the Amplified says, We are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. And so what we read about here is the power of of your testimony, is that um, not in, um, what does it say? We We do not war after the flesh, but the power of our testimony is such that these people have got something They don't stop talking about Jesus. It's not just at Christmas time. It's not just tradition for them. You know, and and at this time of year, they don't stop talking about that camp that they're going to. You know, and um, and while while we're still getting over our our hangovers and the silly season and you know whatever, you know that um, and so like like it said there, there's no sophistic argument or pride that can stand up against the true knowledge of God you know there's um, let, let's turn to another scripture Romans chapter 14 because the true knowledge of God that we've received is is a, is a wonderful thing. You know, a lot of people don't don't know, you know, what they're they're singing or, or hearing at this time with with um, Christmas carols. But as Simeon said, my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord, that we've come to know the Lord. So, you know, as as far as the as far as the unsaved go, um, there's there's no point getting into fruitless conversations or, or arguments about what's right and wrong and, and what the history is and what's, what's this and that, the, the point is that they don't know Jesus Christ. Um, so let's continue to, to be a testimony and not, not war after the flesh, but, but after showing the Lord living in our life. So that, that's for the unsaved. And as for in the church... Um, I want to read here in, in Romans chapter to 14 just about once again this is in reference to not bothering about you know sophisticated arguments or the or the traditions of men so in in verse 13 it talks about not creating a stumbling block for one another so let us not therefore judge one another anymore but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest uh, thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. So this is the New Testament way. You know, that Christ died for your, your brother or your sister. And so what it's saying here, we don't be judgy on things that don't really matter. Um, you know, like sometimes you get people, like talking about coming out of different backgrounds, sometimes people have come out of different churches and come to the Lord and, and they actually don't want it, that stuff anymore because it's compromised to them. And, and, and they love things like 2 Corinthians chapter 6 where it talks about come, come out from among them and be ye separate. I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> you know, like, if, that, if that's what people have come to the Lord and they just want to grab a hold of the things of the Lord and they want to leave behind all those things that even slightly relate to the traditions of men and that sort of thing. But, but what Romans 14 is talking about here is that is don't be judgy about the things that, that don't really matter. You know, if it... If it matters to him but not to you, well, well, praise the Lord. If he doesn't like eating meat, as it talks about here, maybe uh, let's uh, bring it into modern terms, gluten-free. If he, uh, if he doesn't like uh, eating gluten, don't wave uh, panna di casa in front of his nose. Um, 
And verse uh, 17, it says here, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, the things wherewith one may edify another. For meat destroy not the work of God, all things indeed are pure, but is it is evil for that man who eateth with offence. Um, the Amplified says something along the lines, it, um, if you cause offence, then it's wrong. Um, I don't think that was the Amplified, but something along those lines. So it might be fine, it might be fine for you. So in, in any of these things that we, we talk about when creating a stumbling block for your, for your brother or your sister, is that... Um, uh, in, in, in anything that you might have a, a solid argument or, or whatever is that and you might stand up for what is right you know to take up a cause or whatever but actually the scripture saying here is if you cause your brother to fall or cause your brother to stumble then uh, you know you cause offence then it's actually wrong even though you think you might be right and you've got all the details and you've got it all tucked in and whatever but it's something that doesn't really matter, it's not leading people to Jesus Christ, then in, in you pushing your cause, um, that you're actually wrong, even though you might think you're right, sort of thing. So we don't, that's what the New Testament talks about, uh, that, we don't, um, that we don't cause offence. Let's uh, turn to John chapter 1. So the safest place as a church is that, that we don't promote traditions of men, but rather we continue to promote Jesus Christ. And so going back to where we started, the actual story of, of Jesus Christ coming as a man, we read here in John chapter 1 and verse 14. This is a great scripture. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we behold his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's the story of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is coming at you through your TV screen or the shopping centre or school or whatever it is at this time of year, this is the story of Jesus Christ. And we know it. All the people said Amen. that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we behold his glory. And because that's the bit that gets left out. We behold his glory. You know, um, we started off with the, the story of, of Simeon when he saw um, Jesus as a baby. And now this is John the Baptist, and we'll skip down to verse 29. says, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That's the story. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same uh, said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. You know, people like to keep baby Jesus in a manger. But here we read of the whole story of why he came. That this is the Son of God who baptises with the Holy Ghost. You know, and we'll never get sick of telling that story. Whatever confusion or compromise the world dishes up, 
that will say, you want to be free from sin? Behold the Lamb of God. You want to have a new life? Be born again? <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God. To, to be baptised. He'll fill you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Son of God. And a few verses down, he says, follow me. You know, and people start to, to follow him there. And, and praise the Lord that that's our story. And I know people here have got absolute clarity on that. And that's, that's, uh, that's not an issue. Praise the Lord for the Holy Ghost and, and what he reveals in our life. And we're absolutely convicted of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, why he came, what he's done in our life. There is no confusion with the compromise of this world. And actually, at a time of year like this, and I know it because I already hear it in conversation, is everybody's looking forward just to being together, camping together. There's maybe some parts of that, you know, when you're waiting for the shower or whatever, that, you know, not so much. But, you know, like just being together, praising the Lord together, <coughs> um, worshipping Him, being ministered to in fellowship, in in communion and all of those things that have have become our life and and that we don't it, it means just so much more to us than the traditions around about and it's um and and we we are, are, are complete in him him and if anything else it shows just how wonderful what he's done in our life because People look forward to different aspects of, of, of this time of year, but it doesn't last. You know, it's just, it's just a moment, you know, like, but we have something lasting and something that, that, that we hang on to, and it's the truth, you know, and, and we, we abide in that truth, and, and we, don't, uh, we don't war after the flesh, but we, we're able to... Um, just take take the word of God out. That we're never confused about the issue out there is none other than the fact that people don't know Jesus Christ and we want to take it to the world. All the people said? Amen. I'll hand over to Anthony for communion.